Okay, so welcome to Yoga Over 50 from Blue Point Yoga Studio Remotely. I'm Lynn and it's good to be with you this morning. So my husband said I should have a nice potted plant to make like a real yoga studio. So my amaryllis is blooming, so I have brought it out here for your um, delectation, but I'm not gonna leave it here because I'm afraid I'll bump into it and knock it over. So just have a little view, and then I'm going to put it back up on the table so that I don't kill it by accident. Rather unusually, I'm beginning seated today. So if you can sit comfortably on the floor, do that. Maybe like me, I have a little, little folded up blanket to sit on. You might like a large towel or a firm pillow or something to sit on um, so that you can sit comfortably with your pelvis tipped a little bit forward so that you have the small curve at the waist part of the spine and you can sit with a tall spine letting some of the weight go into your sit bones and some of it go into the sides of your legs and the feet where they're touching the floor. But suppose you don't have a good way to sit comfortably on the floor. You could sit in a chair. So if you want to do some anyway of your seated postures in a chair, pick a chair that lets you sit forward so don't lean against the back sit forward so that some of the weight is going into the sits bones and eh, maybe i'll turn sideways and some of the weight is going into your feet so that you have your knees at or a little below your hip level you might have to put something on the chair so that you can sit fully upright in the chair and you can do lots of yoga in a chair so if you prefer a chair for sitting please feel free to use one and I am going to um, do some things later where either a wall or a chair will be handy. We're going to do some um, shoulder things today, some shoulder mobility, flexibility, and strength, and sort of graded um, ways of building strength, which might um, require using a wall or a chair to modify poses that might be. Um, too taxing right now uh, if you do them from the floor. But for now, whether you're seated on the floor or seated in a chair, we will settle here. So sit solidly, draw your attention inward, let your eyes close or let your gaze be soft. I'll tell you when to open your eyes again. Let your hands rest either in your lap or on your legs, somewhere that lets your shoulders relax, just slope away from the ears and lets your elbows hang under your shoulders, close to your body, both side to side and front to back. Think about creating space across the front and the top of your chest so that your shoulders can rest sort of toward the back of your torso. Think about stretching some length into the spine all the way from the tailbone straight up. So not kicking the ribs up out and do a back bend, but just straight up long through the back of the neck and out through the crown of the head where your hair comes from. And now draw your attention to your breath. Put your hands below your waist on your lower belly and make sure that your belly is bulging out into your hands as you breathe in and drawing back a little as you breathe out. So you need a little bit of tone in the core muscles to sit upright, but not so much that you inhibit the free movement of all of your torso muscles for breathing. And you could move your hands up onto your ribs. Feel the ribs spreading, rotating upward as you breathe in and folding down as you breathe out.
And then moving your hands up near your collarbones. See if you can feel some movement in the top of your chest as you breathe in and a little drawing back as you breathe out. And then let your hands rest again so that your arms can be entirely relaxed. And let's just try a brief, a brief breathing practice. So imagine that you could breathe in through your left sits bone and have the air travel all the way up through your left hip, the left side of your torso, the left side of your neck, the left side of your head and face up to the space above and between your eyes, and then down the right side, down the right side of the face, the right side of the torso, the right hip, and out the right sits bone, and then breathe back in on the right side, reversing that U-shaped pattern of the breath. Exhaling down the left side, and then again, inhaling on the left side. So just repeat that a few times if you like. Following the air on its imaginary path. Maybe noticing that although it's not a real path for the air, it is a real path for your attention, which you've now linked to your breath. So complete your cycle of breathing so that you've done an equal number to each side, and then come back to your unobserved pattern of breath and let your eyes come open. So we'll just do a little seated warm up here before we give some attention to the shoulders. So let's begin by just moving the spine a little bit. If you put one hand on the lower belly and the other palm with the palm facing out to the small of your back, on an exhale, draw up the abdominal muscles and feel that flatten the small of your back. And on the inhale, feel the tailbone press to the back, the belly pulls, bulges out, and you get a little extra curve in the waist part of the spine and just let the pelvis rock back and forth in that dimension. So initiating this with the breath activating the core muscles. So leave the rest of your body alone and just a little tipping back and forth here. And then settle that tipping back down into what is a neutral spine for you, which would have a little inward curve at the waist, different for different people. And stretch the whole spine tall. So we're lengthening along the axis of the spine, straight up, no back bend here, straight up, long in the back of the neck. If you put a few fingers to the back of your neck and tip your head up, the chin up, and then the chin down toward the chest, You'll feel that when you tip your chin up, you get sort of pinch the fingers a little bit. And when you tip your chin down, you can feel the ligaments on the back of the neck rise up. And in the middle there, you settle that tipping down. There's a little soft inward curve at the neck where you have a long neck relaxed with its natural little inward curve. And let's just take a few swivels of the head, chin staying level over one shoulder and then the other, just slowly swiveling back and forth. And then back to the center. And now let your 
right ear tip toward your right shoulder, reach out with the left hand. You can just have the fingers on the floor or you can pull the fingers back toward the forearm in kind of a Indian dancer looking shape. You might move your arm a little forward and back, feeling some stretch along the top of the shoulder and the side of the neck. You, if you like, you can put your hand on your head. I'm gonna be careful so I don't turn off my earphones. And then let your head bob back up and the arm relax. Pick another couple swivels, maybe a little looser. And back to the center. And now let your left ear go toward your left shoulder and reach out with the right arm away from you. Staying sitting upright. You can either tent the fingers or draw the fingers back toward the forearm. And notice that if you move your hand a little forward and a little back, you might feel that stretch in a different place. You might like to give a little weight with the arm drawing the side of the head. And let the head bob back up and take another couple of swivels. And maybe tip the chin up a little bit, drop the mouth open, just let the jaw drop open and then close it lightly, not all the way. You put your fingers at the top of the collarbone, you can feel a little stretch there. It's a muscle that attaches to the collarbone and the sternum and then to the jaw. And tip back up again, maybe let the head drop down toward the chest. Draw a little circle toward one shoulder and then another shoulder. And then back to the center and let the head come up right again. Okay, so we'll start moving the arms a little bit. So bring the fingertips to the shoulders and stick the elbows out to the side like you had short wings. And we're going to flap the wings a little bit. So on an inhale, let the elbows rise up, and on an exhale, let them come down. I've got to be careful so that I don't smack into my headphones, but you can raise your elbows as far as they are comfortable going up and down. And as you do that, bring your attention to your shoulder blades sliding on your ribs on the back of your body. So when you raise your elbows up like this, the shoulder blades are swiveling out and up, and as you bring the elbows down, the shoulder blades are coming in toward your spine and toward each other, like that. And that's part of where mobility through the shoulders comes from, is the freedom of movement on the shoulder blades on the back ribs. So we're just exploring a little mobility here. So mobility is easy range of motion through the joints. And then we'll get to a little flexibility later. So just up and down a few times, and then bring the elbows out to the sides and we'll exhale to bring the elbows toward each other and inhale to bring the elbows toward the back of the body, the shoulder blades squeeze together, exhale toward the front, inhale as they come to the back, keep the spine long and in a neutral position. I can hear a lot of crackling and popping going on. Hope that's not coming through my headphones. And then bring the shoulders back to um, a level position. And we're just gonna have a big kind of infinity motion with the elbows and let your torso kind of swivel and bend a little bit, just moderately. Again, this is mobility, not so much flexibility. So just moving within an easy range of motion a few times around one way and a few times around the other way. And then let the arms rest back down and let your hands rest so that the weight of your arms is a little bit supported by your hands. And then we're going to do a small, small motion with the shoulders. So imagine that you have a pencil point on your right shoulder and you're going to use that pencil point to draw a tiny horizontal line moving forward and back. Um, I can turn to the side, but I don't think you'll even see anything because I'm just drawing a line that's maybe an inch. So not, not seeing very much happening, just a little motion there on that side, and then do that same thing on the other side. Very small, using the muscles that 
hold your shoulder socket together to make that movement. And then bring the shoulders to the rest to rest for a moment. And now take that same pencil point back to the right side and you're gonna make a circle, but very small, maybe about the size of a quarter. So a few times around one way, and a few times around the other way. Again, use the muscles of the shoulder to do that. And then go to the other side and you're making this small circle. A few times one way and a few times the other way. Slowly around. Okay, I'll turn back to the front. So we've had a little mobility through the shoulder, so just within an easy range of motion. And now let's do a few things for a little flexibility where we take the range of motion um, toward the end of what seems comfortable for you. Now, don't hurt yourself, right? That would be non-harming, would be one of the main principles of yoga. And shoulders are a cranky part of the system and plenty of people wind up with either temporary or lasting um, problems with their shoulders over time. So respect your shoulders. Don't ask them to do something that really is not good for them. So the idea of mobility and flexibility and strength is to maintain the ability of your shoulders without hurting them. So let's scoop the arms up just into whatever range of motion. If you can reach your arms all the way up by your ears, fine. If you can reach them a little behind your body, that's fine. And turn the palms and exhale back down again. And inhale them up. Stretch them long, reaching out through the fingers, reaching a little bit back through the fingers. And exhale them back down. Now reach the arms out to the side, stretch them along. Let's take a little twist here. First, redo your legs. Reach them out to the side, and we'll let the right arm come across the body, grasp the shoulder, give it a bit of a stretch, a little extra stretch across, drawing it away from its shoulder blade, and bring them back out again on an inhale and exhale to bring your left arm across give it a little stretch with your right hand inhale to bring them open again and now we're going to um, cross the arms into eagle arms here and so first we'll bring the right arm under the left arm and then you can bend at the elbows you could just bend them like this that would be fine maybe you can bring the backs of the palms together Maybe you can wrap around and bring the front of the palms together, whatever works. Press the palms and the forearms and the elbows together. And then inhale the arms up a little bit and down a little bit and up a little bit on an exhale. Inhale and down a little bit on the exhale. One more time. And then try extending the arms away from you. So unfolding at the elbow. Maybe they don't go very far. That's all right. And then bring them up and gently unwind them and stretch them back out again. And we'll wrap the other way. I don't remember which I did. <laughs> and then bring your Hands either just out at an angle, that would be fine. Palm, backs of the palms or front of the palms wrap. And we'll press the hands and the arms together. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Once more. And then with the elbows more or less level, see if you can Extend at the elbows, so straighten out at the elbows a little bit and then flex them again. So this is a more of a flexibility thing, getting a little extra stretch. Unwind the arms, stretch them out, reach the arms a little bit behind your body, and then let your arms relax back down. And now let's do a little more for the back here. So now you've got your legs crossed a different way. We're gonna take a little bit of back extension in a seated position. So Hinging from the hips, let your body tip forward, open the whole front of the spine, 
creating a small back bend. You can give a little traction on the knees with the hands and then gather the abdominals in to sit yourself back up again. And then again on an inhale, come forward, making a little back bend. Exhale to gather the core muscles and sit yourself back up. And this time, inhale forward, and we're going to stir around, keeping reaching out through the spine. So reach out over one knee, a little back behind the hips. Keep stretching out over the other knee so you're not bending your shoulders toward your hips, keeping the spine very long. And then we'll go back around the other way. Keep stretching out past your knees and your feet, and then exhale to sit yourself back up again using the core muscles. And now let's recross the legs and do that with the other crossing. It feels different on the hips. So we'll inhale, create this little back bend, leaning forward and then out over one knee and back behind the body and out over the other knee and to the front again and then stir back over that knee you just came past, back around, out over the other knee, stretching to the front, and exhale to draw yourself back up. All right, and now let's, um, yeah, we'll leave the legs like this. And now let's stretch the arms out again, and we'll have a little bit of cow face arm. So bend your, um, let's see, bring the right arm up, and then pat, between the shoulder blades. And don't pat so far down that you get all hunched up here. So you're gonna reaching the elbow up and back. Okay? And the shoulder is staying back behind your body and the elbow is staying back behind your body. If I turn around, it's a little, it will be a little easier to see. So we'll pinch and reach the elbow back and the shoulder back. The head's still free to move in the other arm. I'm gonna flip the palm to the back, bend that arm around and reach that hand up behind me. It really does not matter how far back you reach, but I'm trying to make the elbow and the shoulder of that arm as well come behind the body. Maybe you can see my elbows sticking out there a little bit behind my back. So I'm making this big arc from elbow to elbow across the front of my body. And my head is still able to move around, not up and down. So don't wind up so tight that you can't move your head freely. And press the back of the hand in the back to your back. Press the palm of the top hand into your back. And stretch from elbow to elbow. And then we'll slowly unwind this and stretch the arms out from side to side. And do that on the other side. So now with your left hand pat behind the back, reach the arm up and back. So the elbow's coming up and back behind your body. Other arm reaches out, swivel the palm, reach behind your body, bend at the elbow, bring that hand up. If your fingers come together, that's nice, but who cares? So reach back with the elbows, reach back with the shoulders, making this big arc across the front of your body. Head still free to move. Yeah, you'll notice we're not using straps to pull things together here. Just using your arms to move themselves into position. And then unwind the arms and stretch them out again. Bring them down, maybe take just a few loose shrugs of the shoulders and back around. Okay, cool. All right, so let's just do a couple things to warm up the um, legs before we come to a standing position and start um, doing some things for shoulder strength. Actually, we're doing a few things for shoulder strength right here, right? Because we have the upper body weight supported on the hands and the arms. So we're gonna press into the hands, especially the inside edge of the hand. Your shoulders are, I mean your wrists, are under your shoulders or maybe a bit ahead of the shoulders uh, lengthwise and more or less under the shoulders side to side, although a little wider will be fine too. But concentrate on pressing into the inside edge of your hands and feel like you're drawing your hands toward each other on the mat. And also at the same time, feel like you're rolling the back of your um, triceps the back of your upper arms in toward each other. And that makes 
a little squaring across the top of the chest so you can feel as if your collarbones are kind of drawing out between your arms for a very square position here. Okay. And now let's on an inhale, bring the right leg back behind you. I can't keep mirroring. So I'm gonna bring my left leg back, take a press through the back of the leg and the bottom of the foot, exhale that knee back underneath you and go to the other side, come straight back with the heel straight up toward the ceiling, press that one back. Boy, that knee's been bent for a while, doesn't wanna straighten out and exhale back down. And now bring the right leg back out, stretch it long, point, toe pointing straight down toward the floor. Make sure it's doing that. Reach long and now bend at the knee and we're gonna take some big circles around. So just kind of make like you have a very loose hip there with the knee going around in a great big circle out ahead and behind, out to the side, maybe crossing the midline and to the extent you have room and back around the other way. So this is mobility again. Now it's mobility for the hip and we'll set that knee down and then we'll bring the other leg back. So the left leg's coming back with the toes pointing straight down. This looks odd to me on my screen for some reason. Keep pressing through the hands so you have a strong frame for the front of your body. And then we'll bend at the knee and take some loose circles here with this knee. Maybe it feels different on one side. Slowly around, see if you can get every part of that circle. If you feel like some part of the circle is sticky or missing, you could work back and forth a few times around that place. And then we'll set that knee back down. Take a little stretch back into child's pose. Reach out with your arms. Plant the hands so the elbows are up off the floor. So you're supporting the upper part of the body. You may let your head rest, however, if you like. And we'll just notice how that is. And then let your arms come back alongside your body and let your shoulders just droop forward. So very well supported here. We don't usually go drooping our shoulders forward, but this is kind of a relaxing and safe way to do that. And then bring the hands back forward, plant the hands, let your weight come up onto hands and knees. We are headed for um, a standing position. So however that works for you to bring one foot forward and press yourself to come up to standing. Okie doke. Okay, so now we're gonna do a few things that um, could be done on the floor, at a wall, or with the aid of a chair. So I think, um, I don't have a good way to stand perpendicular to a wall, so I think you're not gonna see very well. So I'll describe in words um, what I'm doing and then I'll demonstrate it um, using a chair. So if you're using a wall, so we're gonna make like the wall is the floor. So we'll put the hands out onto the, onto the wall at about shoulder height to begin with and the shoulders distance apart. And I realize you can't see scarcely anything here. So we can do a lot of things. We could walk the feet back, walk the hands down. Now this is a great view, right? So I am making an L shape with the wall. I could do that. Give a little bend to the knees. Okay, so that's um, one option. And I'm gonna show you the chair version because you'll be able to see this more easily. So if you wanna use a chair for a little bit of a prop. So the point of using the wall is so that you can do things, strength training things for your shoulders and your arms with less weight on them than if you were on the floor, okay? So you can do similar things with a chair. So for the L shape, we could step back, putting the fingertips on a chair, move the legs back till you get into an L shape. I gotta keep my arms away from my ears here. You can certainly have a bend to the knees, which allows the belly to come closer to the thighs. 
You could bend and straighten a little bit. You can do this at the wall too. Keep pressing both hands firmly into the wall if you're doing it at the wall. We could take one hand away. So we could take the right hand away, maybe bring it to the right hip. You can do this on the wall too. Give a big bend to the left knee, rotate the torso, reach the arm out from the shoulder, just in line with the shoulder to shoulder line. Bring the arm back, rotate back, straighten up the knee. Bring the arm back out again. We'll do that on the other side. So bringing the left hand to the left hip, taking a big bend to the right knee, rolling the body around, stacking the left shoulder above the right, possibly reaching the top arm out from the shoulder. No need to reach behind your body with it, just out. And bring the hand back in and roll back to the center. Bring the arm out again. Give a little bend to the knees so you can walk back in and stand yourself back up again. Just take a little loose shrug around. Okay, great. So we could also use that same setup either at the wall or with the back of the chair. Uh, did I mention put, put at least two of the feet of the chair on your mat so that it won't get away from you? And we could bend back down into a, an L-shaped position. And now we can get a little warrior three going here. So if you put your weight into your right foot, and bring the left foot behind you, straight behind you. Reach out, reach out with the heel. Stretch long, keep pressing into both hands. You know, one of your arms is gonna wanna collapse, but see if you can keep both of them pressing out. Reach out with the heel with the toe pointed mostly down toward the floor and the hips mostly level. All right, so we just did the warrior three with the chair on both sides. So what else could we do with the chair or the wall? Well, how about some down dog? So for the down dog, I'm gonna use the seat of the chair. If you're on the wall, you would have your hands up. You'd let your body pike back from the hips. Depending on how much weight you wanna put in your hands, you might move your feet quite far away from the wall. Maybe the heels need to come up off the ground. So, you're not down as far as in the L shape, but you have more of kind of a trapezoid shape with your, um, your hands here. I'll move the chair over a little bit. So you're making kind of a trapezoid shape. So if you're doing it with a chair, you can grasp the sides of the chair and step yourself back so that you lower your body, make a long line from your wrist up to the hips, Depending on your hamstring flexibility, maybe your heels come down, maybe they don't. We're not going to worry about that. Putting the weight into your hands and into your feet. And then we could do a little rolling forward to plank. You can do this at the wall too. Letting your weight rock forward, making a plank position here. Square across the front of the shoulders, pressing with both arms and hands. And we can exhale to roll back again. And inhale to roll forward. And we could do things with the plank too, like we could shift the weight into the right foot and pick up the left foot and stretch it out behind. And exhale back down. And inhale the left foot back, stretch it out. And let it back down. And back into the down dog, let the knees bend and walk back in and raise the spine upright again. And you could do any of these things on the floor as well. And what if your arms, your wrists don't like that treatment? Well, either with the wall, you could put your forearms to the wall and do that same series of things, the planks and the down dogs, or you could put your forearms to the chair and step yourself back into a dolphin pose on the arms. You can let the body rock forward. You can do this on the wall. You're opening and closing at the shoulder joint, pressing into the elbows and the forearms, opening and closing here, both strength and mobility for the shoulders.
we can make a forearm plank here. And we can do that same thing, shift into the right foot, pick up the left, stretch it out behind. I often think that the forearm plank is a better strengthener for the core muscles than a full arm plank. It seems to be less forgiving of displacing onto other muscles. We'll bring that foot down, shift the weight into the left foot and bring the right foot, stretching it out behind. Keep breathing. And exhale back down, tip back into the dolphin pose, give a bend to the knees, be a little bend and straighten. Bend the knees, walk back forward, keep the spine long. As you stand back up again, we just take a little loose joggle around here. And let's just have a little, a little more uh, balancey sort of adventure here. Again, you could do this at the wall, or you could do this on the chair. So on the chair, yeah, I think I'm gonna do this on the forearms. So you come down into a forearm plank. And here's where the excitement comes in. So we'll shift the weight into the right foot and stretch the left foot out behind. And then what about the right arm? Uh, maybe it could reach out. Keep breathing. And bring the arm back down and the leg back down. Take a little break by stretching back into the dolphin pose. You can rise up onto the toes. Let your heels sink a few times. Roll back forward to the forearm plank position. We'll shift the weight into the left foot this time and raise the right foot behind. And maybe, maybe reach out with the left arm. Obviously, this is not my strong side. Keep breathing. And let the arm back down, the foot back down. Stretch back, bend the knees, walk back in, keep the spine stretching long so that you can come back upright again. Woo! And let's inhale the arms overhead. Exhale, hinge forward, let the hands slide down the legs. Let the knees bend, reach back along the hips. Exhale, come up into chair for a moment. Press through the feet, inhale the arms up overhead, and exhale the arms to the sides. Great. And now let's come back toward the floor. Enough of that. But I'm going to keep the chair handy because I think I might use it during Shavasana. Or maybe for a couple other things. Okay, so we'll inhale the arms overhead, exhale, hinge forward. Let your hands slide down. Let your knees bend, bend, bend. Bring your hands to the floor. If you're feeling like you're not quite planked out, you could have another plank and use that to lower yourself down to the floor. And let your chin rest. Let your arms rest behind your body. And we'll just have a little cobering here. Tent your fingers, so have the palms facing down with the thumbs away from your body. Tent your fingers so that your shoulders come up away from the floor. Shoulders again. And then we're going to, on an inhale, stretch forward through the top of the head and out through the feet, a uh, little locust pose, actually. Stretch through the top of the head is where your hair comes from. Just hovering a little bit as if you were a vulture flying over looking for some tasty carrion and exhale back down. And then inhale up again, stretching long. So your eyes are going down toward the floor and you're not using your head to lift your upper body. Your back muscles, your torso muscles are doing that lifting. And exhale back down. And once more, if you'd want, you can reach your arms up off the floor, keeping the shoulders rolled back toward the back of your body. 
and exhale back down. And this time you could bring your arms to pillow under your head. Bend at the knees, let your knees be kind of wide apart. Take a bit of a swish of the legs from side to side. And then lower the legs back down and bring your knees back to the center. And now crawl your right knee out to the side on the floor as if you were taking a giant step up. So you're resting on the inside of your knee and your foot and your leg. Don't have to bring it all the way up to hip level. If you have a great big gap under the hip, you might be more comfortable just stuffing a little, a little pillow or a little towel under there if you have one handy. And let gravity do the opening of the hip there. And then we'll bring that leg back behind and bring the other leg. So now your left leg's coming out to the side. I know you can't see scarcely anything there. But take my word for it, it's out there. So like you were taking a giant step up and resting on the inside of your knee and your foot and the inside of your upper and lower leg. And you might notice quite some difference from one side to the other. So one side might like to be propped up a little bit and the other side maybe not. Keep breathing and stretch that leg out long again. And now bring your hands alongside your ribs with your elbows sticking up and push yourself up away from the floor back through hands and knees. And we'll just do a couple things. Now, if you've got the chair handy, you might want to use a chair for this. If you don't have a chair handy, just have your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. So we're going to do a little bit of a figure four stretch here. And you can do it with the chair by resting your lower legs up on the chair, lying onto your back. I'm still on the screen, yep. Just let the arms rest out to the side with the palms facing up. And then you could bring your right knee closer to your body, turn the lower leg so that you lay the ankle across the left thigh, let the right knee roll away from you. Give a little flexion of that right foot and press away a little bit with the inside edge of the right foot. Notice that that makes a rather different sensation than if you allow the sole of the foot to kind of roll around and face toward your body. Now, if this isn't enough room, there's a solution to that. You just move yourself away so that your leg's not quite as straight, and then maybe that makes more room for your knee to roll out away from your body. So lots of ways to titrate this to what you want. And if you're not using a chair, you just have the foot on the floor with the, the knee out to the side. If you want to have a little more stretch around the back of the hip, you could reach through the legs and draw your left thigh toward you, straight toward you. Keep breathing, and we'll let that leg rest back down. Let both legs rest back down, arms stretched out to the side. I'm just gonna move myself back a little closer. And we'll do that on the other side. So bringing the left knee in toward your chest and then turning so that you can bring the left ankle out across the right thigh. So the foot's kind of sticking out away from you. And now we'll give some flexion through the ankle on the left side and also press the inside edge of the left foot away from the knee. So instead of having it turning around like this, it's pressing away like that. That's a different sensation around the hip. And again, by shifting your bum further away from the chair, you make less of an angle here. It makes a little more room for the knee to rotate outward if you prefer that. If you like, you can bring the right thigh closer to the chest. Yeah, that doesn't want to happen on this side. Ouch. 
So this might be a place where differences from side to side show up quite a bit. And let the leg back down, unwind the cross leg. Maybe reach out overhead with the arms, whichever position you're in, just take a long stretch there. And bring the arms back down to your sides. And we can do a couple other little things here. So I'm gonna shove the chair away. Let the arms rest out to the side. And actually, I'm going to bring the chair back in, but you don't have to. So we'll do a little bridging, which you could do either with the chair or from the feet flat on the floor. So if you're doing it with your legs up on the chair, you'll have your arms stretched out and then you'll gather down with the lower legs. So you're pressing your lower legs into the chair in order to lift your bum away. And that puts a lot on the hamstrings. So it feels a bit different from doing it from the floor. Although it feels like it would on the floor, if on the floor you really drove your heels into the floor and raise the front of your feet. And then you can exhale back down. So if you're on the floor, you might experiment with, as you press into your feet, press into the inside edge, press into the heels, draw the heels toward you, and you might raise your forefoot off the floor, feeling the glute muscles fire up there. And exhale back down again. If your feet are on the floor, you can just take a swish side to side. If your feet are on the chair, you can move your feet out to the edge of the chair. Take a nice swish side to side here. Rolling the spine helps to relax the back. So you're making just a little rotational movement, letting one hip roll onto the top of the other one and back to the center and it looks like i can't see my watch it looks like i can't see my watch yes and i think this is a good time for shavasana so set yourself up in whatever shavasana position you like so if you have your chair handy this is a great shavasana position let your lower legs rest on the chair just let your feet Go into any position they like. Maybe they want to roll out a little. Maybe they want to roll in a little bit. Let your arms stretch out to the side with the palms facing up. If they're comfortable, maybe they would like to take a cactus shape with the elbows bent with the back of your hands to the floor. But if your hands wind up hanging out in space, give them something to rest on. So find another position for the arms so that the Hands rest down completely. You want every part of your body to feel well supported here. If you're not using a chair, uh, you could come back to the wall and put your legs up the wall. Again, with the arms resting out to the side with the palms facing up. If you prefer to just have the Shavasana position in the classic pose, lying on your back on the floor with the legs outstretched, the feet relaxed, or with the knees bent, and the feet flat. Any of those will be fine. Fidget around and make yourself comfortable. And then let yourself become very still. Take a bit of a scan around your body. Check all the parts that are resting on the floor or on the wall or on the chair. Ask yourself, are they really resting there? Are they really just giving up entirely into whatever is supporting them? And you might think, well, that's stupid. How could they not be? 
but sometimes if you check around and purposely release into the floor, you discover that previously you were just hovering a little bit, just a little bit held away. Let your breathing quiet. See if you can extend the exhalation of your breathing a little bit. If thoughts intrude, recognize them with kindness, send them on their way for the moment. your tailbone unfurl toward the floor. Now, if you'd like a longer Shavasana, please feel free to leave the meeting so that you can rest yourself peacefully for a bit longer. Otherwise, let your breathing become a little more active, a little deeper, a little more emphasis on the inhalation now. Maybe breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth a few times. Bring a little motion into your hands and your feet, maybe wiggling the fingers and the toes, maybe lightly clenching them and then spreading them out wide. So many things seem to keep the fingers curled toward the palms. Nice to stretch them out at least a few times a day. If you have your legs up the wall, let your feet slide down, the knees bend so that you gather the knees in towards your chest. If you have your legs up on the chair, you can move your feet out to the side of the chair and let your knees fall toward your chest. If you have your legs outstretched, bend one knee at a time and gather the knees in toward your chest, or you can just have your knees bent with your feet flat on the floor. Take a little side to side roll or a little side to side sway of the knees. Let your torso rotate a little bit here. So notice the difference between having your legs move and your torso stay steady. It creates a little twisting motion through the spine. Whereas if you roll your whole body from side to side, just the whole body moves, maybe like a little massage out to the side of your body as you roll to one side and then to the other side. And then let yourself roll over onto one side. Rest there in a fetal position, making your head comfortable. Trying not to turn my headphones off again.
Let your eyes stay closed for now. And then when you're ready to come up, let your torso kind of roll toward the floor as you press with your arms and let your head drag behind in order to come up and take either a seated or kneeling position that would be comfortable for a moment. So sit as we did at the beginning of class. You could sit in the chair if you want. That would be fine. So sit a little forward, whether you're in the chair or on the floor. If you're on the chair, some of the weight is going into your feet and into the floor. Some of it's going through your sits bones into the seat of the chair. On the floor, some of the weight's in your sits bones and some is in the sides of your legs and your feet. Stretch along the long axis of the spine. Check around for things that you don't need here. Check your buttock muscles, the tailbone. Check your shoulders and your neck. Check your hands. Check your face and your jaw. Check your eyes. Take a few relaxed breaths here. And we'll bring the palms together and the thumbs toward the breastbone. Close with an ohm after an inhale. Om. Thank you for sharing your practice with the rest of us today. And honoring light in each of us. Namaste.